Hello everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I am Tanya Lee and the date today is Tuesday, Mars Day, April 6, 2021, which marks the very first day, the beginning of our new Emerge Challenge, our 21-day challenge, which is actually a 28-day challenge in total, seven days of prep, followed by 21 days of action. So what I want to do here with the first video and the very start of the journey is to give you an idea of what's going down here and uh, perhaps you would like to join. So what is the Emerge Challenge? The Emerge Challenge is an inspiration vlog for 28 days where I invite you to take a challenge with me. The challenge is for those who feel the call to emerge from inertia, from the hibernation of a tough winter. For those who feel heavy, weighed down, or feel loss of vitality. It is about crawling out of the cave of stillness and coming to life with the fires of spring through dedication towards personal health practices to optimize our bodies as vessels for a creative and spiritual life. That was a mouthful. So basically, I am going to run a 28 day daily inspirational vlog, kind of like a video journal I am going to go through an emerging process myself and my goal is to be very raw and honest with my journey and to share the journey with you, her family. And if you feel inspired to join in at any point in time, I would love to have you great things happen with numbers but I am just going to continue along the journey and some of you may join me in the beginning, some in the middle, some in the end, and some of you will be with me from day one until day 28. You can also just join in and watch for your own personal interest. Everything is going to be happening private from the public on our Patreon feed. If you have a membership with Patreon and already, any of the memberships will give you access. If you don't, go on and subscribe for the base membership, and that's $4 Canadian per month. So if you stay for the whole uh, Emerge Challenge, we're going to cross over to the next month, so it'll be $8 in total. You can cancel any time, and this gives us the privacy. Uh, one layer of privacy from, you know, trolls or anybody who's really not even interested in the work at all. And so we can, can feel like we can dive a little bit uh, more intimately to, um, and be a little bit more vulnerable with the work. Um, so what's going to happen is seven days of prep. So this is day one of prep. Prep begins April 6th today and goes until April 12th. We are going to be having a new moon in Aries on the 11th of April. So we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, go through a new moon ritual to plant seeds and intentions on that 12th day, after, on, the tw on the 11th, after we have done seven days of preparation. And I'll get into why that's important first, because we usually start a program right away, let's get to action. And what this does is it's taking a more um, empty your cup first before you can fill it approach. So after the new moon, we are going into 21 days of action aligned with the waxing phase of the moon. That will be from April 13th until May 3rd and we are going to go through a full moon cycle. So in the end, after the 28 days, we're going to meet back and end at the waxing or the waning uh, last quarter. 
So as I said earlier, my commitment is to uh, do the daily vlog. Uh, the vision I have for this is, you know, those movies where you get stuck out in, on the space station for 80 years and all by yourself and you just have this vlog and you're hoping that somebody out there will one day, you know, see the journal. Maybe there's something important information that, uh, that somebody else can use someday, sometime. Um, I also think that it's very precious to do something in the moment and if we can document it, we, th this time will never happen again. And a big part of this inspiration was also examining where I'm at right now, where I want to go, this, you know, coronavirus um, isolation has affected all of us. Um, for myself, you know, my entire business as it existed has changed, which was huge. I had other personal things happen, which were huge. And so I've just spent the last year really in stillness, in a lot of inertia, a lot heavier than I've been used to over the years. I've been used to, you know, community and people and interacting and moving and and creating and uh, it's like it all just came to one big halt and a series of events led me to a series of choices. Um, so I went really deep into hibernation. My, I went really deep into stillness with my body. I processed a lot of deep stuff and there's a lot of great things that have come out of that but there's also things that have been sacrificed and one of those is that I'm not very content with my personal health regimes and which direction they went on the priority list. I'm also feeling more uncomfortable in my body, I have less energy, I have more pain and stiffness and after just turning 46 years old I am also feeling some of the things that naturally happen at this age. So I wanted to take advantage of the fires of Aries and the springtime and use nature as a teacher to, you know, come back from the dead, so to speak. And 21 days is a great period of time to, to apply action to create new habits in our lives. So I'm going to take myself on an emergence journey and I welcome you to join along. Uh, when I post the blogs or the vlogs, please, please comment if you have any questions about your own journey that perhaps I may have some insight or a places that I can direct you. The idea is that we are not all, you know, following this exact same journey that I'm doing. The idea is that you are inspired or receive information that helps you to design your own unique path because we are all so different. Yes, we all have a body that has bones and muscles and similar organs, but also we are very different and we are vast in our complexities and what works for me may not work for you. So keep that in mind throughout the journey if you're following along. Some of the things that I'm doing may inspire you and you want to try them out, but most importantly, you want to make sure that this is your own path and your own journey because really that's the only sustainable path that there is. And I would love to hear about your stories. You are my collaborators. You inspire me more than anybody else. So thank you for sharing. Okay, let's go on with the information. I also, those of you know me already, is I speak astro. So I love the stars and the moons and the planets and I love aligning with nature and aligning with the cosmos. And I've been studying the language of astrology since 2004 and I'm still a very avid student of astrology. So I'm going to be bringing aspects of that also into the journey. 
Um, I am making the commitment though is when I go into Astro Speak, I am going to keep it very simple, fundamental, and I'll do the best I can to translate as if I was speaking another language and then translating it. So let's go into some of the Astro Speak for this adventure. I'm super excited about it. One, the sun. So the placement of the sun is our vitality. It's our energy. It's our purpose in life. It's what gets us fired up to, to want to be here, to want to create. And that's the essence of what we're doing here, especially when we're working on our personal health routines, because the idea is, is that you're increasing your health to increase your vitality, to give you more vital life energy, to create and live a beautiful life. So right now, the sun is in the sign of Aries, and the sun changes signs approximately every 30 days. So each month, you know, towards the end of the month, it will change signs. So it has just gone into Aries. Uh, it's been there for about my calendar, say. Uh, if you want one of these calendars, they're super, super handy. I'll put the link on here. I collaborated with uh, Zephram on making them. They're super handy. Uh, so Aries is the very, ver very first sign of the zodiac, which is 12 signs. It's a fire sign. So there's four elements, fire, earth, air, and water. Fire is action. And it is a cardinal sign, which means the cardinal starts all of the seasons. So spring, winter, summer, fall. So we just came through the, the spring equinox, which means we're in the sign of Aries, the cardinal sign of fire. There is no sign in the entire zodiac more powerful than starting a new action than Aries. And we're going to be planting our seed in the new moon. So in the moon cycle, there's the most powerful place to plant your intentions, to start something new, to tap into new potential is at the new moon. So we're gonna combine these two, the sun in Aries, and the new moon in Aries. Now why we're not starting the journey at the new moon is because we are going to empty our cup first. So right now we're in the waning phase of the moon. We're in the last week of the previous moon cycle, which gives us a chance to exhale, to reflect on where we're at, where we've been, where we wanna go. And then when we hit that new moon in Aries seven days from now, we'll be ready for action right out of the gates. The start of this program today, we have the moon in the sign of Aquarius. The moon, so the sun represents your vitality and what gives you energy. The moon represents your body and your soul. So it is the most fundamental level of the soul in ceremonial magic. And in astrology, sometimes it's referred to our emotional selves and our physical selves. But if you go on deeper exploration, it's, it is that soulful self. So anything that involves, you know, feeling and being in the body and on this planet is the moon. <laughs> we have that in the sign of Aquarius. An Aquarius and Aries combination is super powerful for change, changing your habits. Anytime there's a new or full moon in Aries or Aquarius, I've used it to break some of my biggest addictions. Aquarius is the air element. So like the fire, it is yang, it is active, it's in action, but air is more mental. So it thinks about and it harnesses thoughts and ideas and plans where the fire element is just do, 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 think later. So having those two together, Aquarius is the great thinker. It's a fixed element, which means it harnesses the air element. It harnesses ideas. It stills the mind and its whole shtick is mastery of the mind. So you have mastery of the mind and the most powerful fires of change starting this journey. So exciting. 
What else do I have in my notes here for astrology? Oh, and with the moon. So the moon is flanked by two other planets right now, Jupiter and Saturn. And those of you that follow some astrology may have heard of the great Jupiter-Saturn conjunction that just happened this past December, which started a new 200 year cycle of us moving into air element. If I, let's just translate that for a minute. So Jupiter is expansion. Usually wherever Jupiter is, something is expanding. It's getting big, it's being its biggest life and it brings luck and it brings opportunity. Anywhere that Saturn is, it brings limitation and restriction. So it's very good for planning. It's the father of time. So putting structures in place that you want to last the test of time, because we're gonna put a lot of energy into shifting our personal routines and rituals and habits. We want them to stick around. This is not a, a crash diet or a challenge that you just do for 21 days and then you leave it and never go back to it again. So having Saturn there helps us to create structures that will last the test of time and Jupiter's there to bring us good luck and lots of opportunities and positive optimism. Cool. Okay, I think that's covered everything as far as astro speak goes. So we've got a powerful setup in the sky to support us on our journey. And as I mentioned earlier, right now we are currently in the last quarter of the moon cycle, the last quarter of the waning cycle, known otherwise known as the balsamic phase or the waning crescent. And we'll go into um, what each of those days present as we go on the journey. So now is the time for us to be inward in reflection and to also look for what we need to, what we can, what we have available to us to remove or to get out of the way that will invite more opportunity. Like for example, um, if you wanted to sell your house and put your house on the market right now, some things that you would do to help clear that energy and open up opportunity is to start cleaning out your house, start doing some repairs, start, you know, getting rid of the, the hoarder storage that you have in your basement, just clearing it out so that it welcomes more opportunity. And it's also a great time to connect with your values and the whys. So let's go a bit more into that. So what I wanna talk about uh, to wrap this up is the prep plan that, we're, that I'm going to implement for the next seven days. And then I'll just finish with my report for today. So the plan for the next seven days to prep, we are going to be finishing the waning moon. So it is ideal to prepare for the commitment to action. So we're preparing for our commitment to action at the new moon with these things that we're gonna cover. Getting clear on why we want to change. The why is super important. And really, you know it's time to change when your desire to change is stronger than your desire to stay where you are at right now. Two, reflecting on where we are at physically, emotionally, mentally, and vitally. We need to know where we are at right now. And often we change through panic. And we're just like, I need to be that thing over there. And we put on our blinders and we pay no attention to where we are right now. So it's extremely important in this reflective phase to be honest and to as objectively as you can, Aquarius is there to help us with that, assess where you are at. I'm gonna assess where I'm at. Three, examining our current habits. So nutrition habits, exercise habits, and stress release. Anything that we're doing or not doing for stress release. So not only are we acknowledging where we're at right now, 
as far as how we feel, our energy, our flexibility, our heavy or lightness, all those sorts of things, um, mentally where we're at, emotionally where we're at. We're also looking at what are my habits. Identifying our shadows, our demons, our blocks, and the things that got us to where we're at right now. It's important to keep an eye on our things that could block our success, so we bring them into the light of consciousness. The more we bring them into our awareness, the less we will receive the sucker punch, which is never fun. Acknowledgement of areas we have grown. That's important as well, especially if we're doing that, digging for those shadows. We're also, there's also, there's always good that comes from bad, bad that comes from good. It's all balance. So for myself going down into these deep, dark caves and, you know, I sacrifice some of my physical body and my physical rituals, but I also gained a lot from that time spent in stillness. So acknowledging that. Releasing what we can to open new doors of opportunity. So we already talked about that. And dreaming, it's a time to dream and to visualize about the life we want to live and visualize about, you know, the routines we want to have, the rituals we want to implement, how we want to feel in our body and how we want to move through the world. So those are the things we're going to focus on for the next seven days. I'm just going to use the royal we. <laughs> it's easier to think I'm talking to you than just talking to myself. Okay. And I am going to wrap this up now with my report for today. So the format I think I'm going to use is uh, I'm aiming to have these up before noon every day, which is going to be a challenge for me because I've been sleeping in a lot. So this also forces me into, into some action right away of, of getting up earlier. Yes. And I'm going to try to be as raw and in the moment and in my process and honest as I can be. It makes me a little bit nervous because I'm doing it with the camera, but I'm going to try. So the format will be, I'll give you, um, just tell you how my yesterday went and then what I'm gonna focus on just for today. So, um, I just wrote this like a journal, so I'm going to read it to you. Yesterday. Yesterday was a day. Yesterday was a day of awakening after the Easter long weekend mentality of tomorrow I will go on my plan. In a previous life, you know, 20, 25, I don't know how many years ago now when I was um, competitive bodybuilding and fitness modeling and body transformations was like my life and everything I did, I fell into some really dangerous patterns of, you know, binge eating because on Monday I'll start my diet. Now I have, I fought and I did a lot of work to break it through that mentality. And last weekend, and I think I was surrounded by others who were indulging in that. So I just jumped on the wagon and, and for the first time in a very long time, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to try eating half a, half a chocolate bunny, even though I don't really even like chocolate that much. But I'm like, ah, might as well, might as well join the party. And I was reminded of how shitty that actually feels. And if I continued down that road, I would be back in a very dark place that I left decades ago and I don't want to go back there um, and then a realization which brought a realization of how far I have retreated back into not back into but how far I have retreated into a dark cave of hibernation 
you know, feeling, especially when you're eating too much sugar and, well, for myself, sugar and breads and drinking alcohol and my body is very responsive, so it gets very swollen and stiff and I was heavy and uh, my hips hurt and my skin was having breakouts and my energy, we went to um, Easter brunch and I just wanted to have a nap. I was so tired and just like the act of getting out of my chair and walking to another chair was exhausting. So, and then the overwhelm came in. Overwhelm of how far um, I'm off from where I was just one year ago. And overwhelm of how much work it would take just to get back to where I was one year ago. And this is where often it's like, why even try? I've got so far to go. So in those moments, I had to remind myself, baby steps, baby steps, and you are going to enjoy the journey. You're not going on a diet. Yes, it's gonna be hard work, but you're, it's all about the journey. It's not about the destination. You know, I feel pretty shitty right now, so anything better than that is a win, okay? Day by day. So after going through that, then I also needed to pause and acknowledge, like I'd mentioned earlier, the deep inner work that I have done and how I have grown in so many important ways, super important, valuable ways I would not trade bad growth for anything, you know, and everything has a cost and maybe this was the cost, but I let go of some, some pretty serious addictions and, uh, and in the process establish some new healthy boundaries in relationships. And for those of you that have done that type of work, it's not an easy feat. So I took that time to acknowledge that and I find doing that doesn't, I don't go as deep down the dark, heavy hole as I would if I didn't acknowledge that, uh, that deep internal growth. And that growth, not everybody's going to see it. Right? It's like when you change your body and you like get more muscular and you get your hair done and everybody's like, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow. But those deep internal changes that maybe nobody ever knew you were struggling with in the first place, and you killed those demons deep in the dark cave all by yourself with nobody else. You know, that's, that's an inner strength that needs to be acknowledged internally because it's, uh, it's beautiful, so beautiful. Uh, okay, so that was yesterday. Today, so just for today, just for today, I am going to design a chart. I love me some good charts. A chart to snapshot my current condition and habits so that I can gradually fill it in over the next week. I realize the importance of gauging change based on comparison to your current condition, not on idealized conditions of the average human. So important. This is a journey for you, and the comparison comes to you, and you, and you, not what somebody says, or, you know, we all have to, even the most common one is like, this is what you should weigh, according to BMI. We all have different densities, we all carry our weight differently. You know when you feel light. You know when you feel too heavy. You know when you're too stiff. You know when you feel weak, right? You know, you've lived enough years now to know how to gauge those things within yourself. Um, so how, yeah, how do you know what direction you're going or how far you have traveled if you do not know where you start, where you started from, where you come from? There's no way to gauge. So this is a big part of this prep phase. So what I'm going to do today, I have one goal today, and that is to create a chart, a measurable chart, 
the inner scientist in me loves to have constants and variables. And uh, I'm going to share that chart with you tomorrow. Okay, that's all I have for right now. And uh, I hope you'll have a lovely day. And I will see you again tomorrow. Mwah.